everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels channel. This is a channel for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. Praise be to the Most High God, who has given us another day, and given us his holy word, in which we can know him and learn to do the things that please him. For those of us who speak English, the King James Version of the Holy Bible is the Word of God. My sisters, I want to talk to you today about what it is that we as Christian women focus on and do. And verily I say unto you, it's so easy to be caught up in this life and to forget what it is that Jesus Christ has done for us and what it is that we therefore should do. You know, as women, we are called to serve an husband, and that's a blessing if we're able to do it. We're also called by God to bring up children in the ways of the Lord and to teach them the difference between right and wrong as we lovingly serve our husband. However, we live in a very complicated world, and sometimes we tend to get the cart before the horse and start thinking about what it is that we're doing instead of what it is that God would have us do. Focusing on things like having enough provisions in the house, what we're going to do if there's a power outage, what's going on in the world around us, crime or, or various unlawful laws and policies, things that are happening that cause us to fear like wars or pestilences or famine, to become preoccupied with the things of this world is very common these days because even those who love the truth and even those who love Jesus Christ can become distracted and overwhelmed by what seems to be going on. Now, as God's people, we understand there is one God and he is the one who decides what happens. And if we're abiding in the faith of Jesus Christ and in the love of God, we have nothing to fear because no matter what happens, we are in the hand of Almighty God and we are safe therein. I want to list for you some things that don't matter. We're going to talk about what matters today, but we're also going to talk about um, what doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter what other people think it doesn't matter what you, other people say or do. It doesn't matter what our plans are for the future, and it doesn't matter what happened to us in the past. What matters is that God, who created the whole world for himself, the stars, the moon, the sun, the earth, the ocean, the mountains, the various beasts of the field and people, that everything is in his, in his hands, and it was all created for his glory. And he, because he loved the world, he sent his only begotten son that those who would believe on him might not perish. And the thing is that these days a lot of people don't know that there's a big difference between God the Son and the Son of God. We as Christians understand that that's a very important distinction. And when we're discerning what to do and also who to listen to or who not to listen to, we want to consider very carefully what it is we follow and what it is that we do. When we're discerning the spirits, we want to understand the difference between the spirit of God and the spirit of of Antichrist or false prophecy. In 1 John chapter 4, let's read beginning in 1 John chapter 4 and verse, beginning in verse 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because there are many, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. We also read here very clearly, Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. 
And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now is it in the world. So one way we can discern whether or not something is Antichrist or against Christ is if somebody knows who Jesus Christ is. And Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, was the Anointed One, who at the time of his baptism in the River Jordan was anointed with the Holy Spirit of God, and in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So there is no triune Godhead. Rather, the Godhead is in the Son of God. And we who believe this, we believe on the name of Jesus Christ, which is the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. And we have been baptized in that name, and our sins have been remitted. And we are filled with the Holy Spirit of Almighty God, and we are Christians, and we speak the truth. That is the first thing that we would want to bear in mind when we're thinking about who to listen to or who to follow. So we don't want to listen to or follow someone who doesn't understand who Jesus Christ is, of course. But there's another very important aspect of telling the difference between whether someone is of God or not. And so now I want to just go a little bit further into the passage here in 1 John chapter 4. And let's begin in verse 15. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Now, here we can see that those who understand that the Son of God is Jesus Christ and that in him his Father fully dwells. And so the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit is Jesus Christ. And we believe this, but we also thereafter continue in his word. And we walk as he walked in this world, in love. So we love Jesus Christ because he first loved us. Verse 20. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. So a Christian is somebody who understands who Jesus Christ is. And once their sins have been remitted by baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, which is for the remission of sins, and it is the only gospel that can save anybody, when we're filled with the Holy Spirit of God, we walk in the spirit of truth and the spirit of love. And we love our brother as ourselves. We don't look at our brother and think that the way into the kingdom is to compete with our brother. You know, Paul likened the way unto life as being like a race. And so I want to read for you about this now in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And please turn with me, if you can, in your Holy Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and we'll begin in verse 24. 
Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. There are different kinds of races, my sisters. There are races wherein people compete to win a prize. So there's only one gold medal, as it were. And we who are Christians, that's what we strive to attain, a crown in heaven. The way we obtain that, though, isn't to, to compete with others, but to compete with ourselves, to attain our personal best, to focus on the things of God no matter what, and walk our own walk and do what is right for us to do in our life as servants of the living God. And what other people think of us doesn't matter. And furthermore, what we think about other people doesn't matter either. And it's so easy to become distracted and to become, as in the world, feeling like a victim of the world instead of walking in love. Being afraid of what people are saying or doing or what they're thinking instead of being afraid of what God thinks and seeking him. So the race that we run isn't against our brother or our sister. The race that we run is to win the battle, the race, against the things of this world, the world, the flesh, and the devil. So if we go again now, so please hold your place in 1 Corinthians. Let's go to 1 John again, and chapter 2, starting in verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world... The love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And it is the will of God and the commandment of Jesus Christ that we love one another. The kingdom of God is not a competition. It's not about who gets there first or who's the mo you know going to have the best crown. And we read in the scripture of the disciples of Jesus Christ before the Holy Ghost was poured out that they often were talking to one another about who was going to be greatest. But we who are God's people don't do that. We understand that it doesn't matter who's the greatest. It doesn't matter who's the boss, as it were, because we all serve the Lord our God, and we walk in humility and Christian love and godly fear. So to fear God is to not fear men. So we don't worry that somebody's going to outdo us or somebody's going to say something that makes us look bad or we don't think about our reputation or we don't think about the future or the past or anything because if we as God's people are abiding in love he is surely able to carry us through every single thing that we might face we as God's people in this time we understand that this world is passing away and we want to focus on what matters and Jesus Christ said that the whole of the law was contained in two commandments, to love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourself. And so when we love God, we love our brethren also, and we love our neighbor, and we understand that to serve God means that we do these things even when it seems impossible. You see, we don't worry about what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't worry about what happened in the past. We don't worry about what people think about us or what they say about us or what they might do to us or what they have done to us. Rather, we obey the Lord. We obey his commandments. And then when we obey his commandments, we know that our life is hid with Christ in God. Let's begin reading now in Philippians chapter 
3 to understand this in verse 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark of the high calling, of the prize, pardon me, of the high calling of God and Christ Jesus. So when we love God, we keep his commandments. And he commanded us to love one another. And you might say, well, how do I do that? Well, in Colossians chapter 3, we read, beginning in verse 12, Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Charity is the kind of love that doesn't care about itself. Charity is the kind of love that Jesus Christ showed when he laid down his life for us. And so we don't think about the things of this world. We don't concern ourselves with the various dramas that go around on around us in people or in the world. We trust in God, understanding that what we see right now is very, very temporary. I want to close. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Hallelujah. In verse 29, But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none, and they that weep as though they wept not, and they that rejoice as though they rejoiced not, and they that buy as though they possessed not, and they that use this world not as abusing it for the fashion of of this world passeth away. Christians are safe in Jesus Christ. And if we know who he is, and we've obeyed his gospel, and we walk in love, then we have nothing to fear at all. And this is what we are called to do. We are called to be as lambs in the midst of wolves, wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So my sisters, I hope that we can understand that when we're walking as a Christian, it's not about what happens today or tomorrow. It's a matter of the love in our heart and whether or not we're walking in love today. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ who saved us, who bought us with his precious blood. And if we abide in him and he is in us, then there is no fear. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, now and forevermore. Amen.